Hello Brainers, my name is Yais and welcome to the Big Brain Busters. So in this video we are going to look at spermatogenesis, but I am also going to introduce a little bit of gametogenesis in general, then we are going to specifically look at this topic. With that being said, let's jump into it. Okay, so what is gametogenesis? So this is just simply the formation of gametes, which are the male and female gametes, all right? Then in males, it is called spermatogenesis. Then in females, it is actually called oogenesis. Then um, these gametes that are actually formed are derived from primordial germ cells. So all the cells, either the ovaries or the sperms, are actually derived from the primordial germ cells. They all come as unipotent um, you know, cells that haven't yet differentiated. Okay, so due to presence of certain molecular factors, these are the ones that actually make the primordial germ cells to differentiate into either sperm cells or, um, into, or into ovaries. So these primordial germ cells are actually formed in the second week of the, uh, from the ectoderm, sorry, or the epiblast. So the ectoderm or the epiblast, these are just simply, um, you know, are discs that are actually formed. So you have the bilamina germ disc, which further um, develops into the trilamina germ disc. Okay, so and that is under gastrulation, which is another topic of the day, of another day. Okay, so the primordial germ cells are actually formed in the second week from these two plates, okay? Then in about fourth week, you find that these primordial germ cells actually start migrating from the point where they were formed to the wall of the yolk sac. So they start moving to the wall of the yolk sac. Okay. Then along that, along their journey, as they are moving to to the yolk sac, they are actually proliferating. Okay. So they are um, dividing mitotically to produce more and more primordial germ cells then in the fifth week they actually reach their respective gonads so if it's in you know if it's in males they reach into the to their respective sites and if it's in females they reach to their respective sites then differentiation of these gonads occurs in the sixth week so initially you find that they are just un uh, you know unipotent cells which haven't yet differentiated <coughs> then uh, at some point now in the sixth week of um, embryonic development you find that they differentiate into either testicles or um okay into either you know um spermat spermatogonia or ugonia so yeah that's around the sixth week when they actually um, you know, specify into their main characteristic. Then along the journey, I've already mentioned this, they are actually proliferating and increase in number. Then um, in terms of differentiation of these gonads, it is simply via the presence of this gene known as the SRY gene, which is only present on the Y chromosome. So if it is on if if you have a Y chromosome then meaning that you must be male. Okay? By biologically you must be male. And this from this gene is only encoded on the Y chromosome. So absence of this gene will actually denote that um, the person who is going to be formed in that em as an embryo will be actually female. So meaning that the gonads will be that of a female characteristic due to absence of this SRY gene. Okay. So these are the um, this is the bilamina embryonic disc of which we say that the primordial germ cells are actually derived from the epiblast. Then this is a bilamina germ disc, so you have the epiblast and the hypoblast. Then due to gas gastrulation, a process called gastrulation, then a trilamina embryonic disc will be formed in which you form the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. So the primordial germ cells are derived from either, you derive them from either the epiblast or the ectoderm, okay? 
Then um, remember we said that those primordial germ cells after being formed, they actually move to the what? To the walls of the yolk sac. So they move here towards the allantoic uh, part of the embryo. So this is the for, uh, this is the um, foregut, then this is the midgut, and this is the hindgut, uh, or the caudal part. This is the cephalic part of the um, embryo. Okay, and this is the yolk sac. This entire baggish kind of structure is known as the yolk sac. Then this is a chromosome, and this is a Y chromosome, which is specifically found in males. And uh, on this chromosome, there is a gene, there is a region where the SRY gene is actually found. Okay, so now let's look at the process of spermatogenesis. So this is just simply formation of male sex garments. Okay, then it actually starts uh, at puberty from 12 years old to 16 years old i mean in the range of 12 years old to 16 years old that's when puberty in males begins then when it begins it actually proceeds to old age so from birth to early ages of puberty an individual is actually composed of spermatogonia okay so like one thing you should know is that spermatogenesis in males it actually begins at puberty it is different from females of which oogenesis begins while they are still in the womb or in the uterus in intrauterine life that's when oogenesis begins but for males they the uh, process of spermatogenesis begins at puberty so that these are the key differences between spermatogenesis and oogenesis then spermatogenesis occurs in the seminiferous tubules of the testis because remember now at this point at puberty you will find that the this um, male has got the scrotum and the testis so the testis has got seminiferous tubules and that is where production of these sperms actually occurs so at puberty when spermatogenesis kick starts it occurs in three main stages okay so what are the three main stages of spermatogenesis so these are spermatocytosis meiosis and spermiogenesis so now let's look at these three stages of spermatogenesis so we'll look at um, the main, we'll look at the first two, which is um, spermatocytosis and meiosis in this diagram. I'll explain it here. So this is the primordial germ cell where, it, where everything begins as unipotent cells. Okay, so this is spermatocytosis. So what happens is that the primordial germ cells will proliferate along the way, then and um, via mito mitosis so they proliferate mitotically and then they, they produce spermatogonia okay so these cells actually are diploid okay meaning that they contain the number of chromosomes remember in humans we have 46 chromosomes and since we have 46 chromosomes that simply means that 44 are somatic cell chromosomes and then the other two we have the x chromosome and the y and the y chromosome in males uh, so these are what these are gamete these are for sex characteristic chromosomes okay so altogether 46 so these cell structures are actually deployed then at the the stage of spermatogonia this spermatogonia will um, divide my, mitotically again to produce two spermatogonia so you have spermatogonia type A and spermatogonia type B so now <clears throat> type A is dark then type B is light okay so um, this spermatogonia these two types of spermatogonia the one that proceeds into forming the actual sperms is actually type B, which is light and pale. The type A only acts as a reserve. So when the spermatogonia here, um, you know, is formed, then it divides mitotically. 
what will happen is that it will divide into type A cells, which are just reserve cells, then the type B ones, which are light and pale, are the ones that will proceed as the spans. Okay, so um, this process is actually occurring where? At puberty. Okay, then this type B light and pale spermatogonia would divide mitotically again and it will enlarge. Then when it enlarges, it will produce another um, cell type known as primary spermatocyte. So now it is no longer being called spermatogonia, but it is now called primary spermatocyte, which is still deployed in chromosome number. Okay. Then let's look at the next one, which is meiosis. So at primary spermatocyte here, then the next stage, the spermatocytosis stage is done, then the next stage is simply meiosis. So meiosis now, this is where this number of chromosomes is halved, okay? So we we'll have meiosis 1 taking place. So primary spermatocyte will divide under meiosis 1 and the number of chromosomes will be halved into haploid number. And these two haploid cells that have been produced Will be called secondary spermatocytes. Then these secondary spermatocytes will divide in my in meiosis two. You know, since we have two meiosis, we have two stages of meiosis: meiosis one and meiosis two. So the secondary spermatocytes will divide in meiosis two and produce um four haploid spermatids. So meaning that. Here in sperma in spermatocytosis, it was simply conversion of the primordial germ cells into what into primary spermatocyte. Then in meiosis, it was simply division of the prime of the primary spermatocyte into spermatids. So I hope you've gotten this concept. So now these spermatids, at this point in time, they have to undergo spermiogenesis, which is just simply maturation of these cells because right now they are just round cells which have nuclei they have the mitochondria they have the centrosome they have everything there they have more, almost all the organelles that are needed for maturation of the sperm cell so it is these spermatids that will undergo spermiogenesis which is maturation of the sperm okay okay so now let's talk about spermiogenesis which is simply the maturation of the spermatid Okay, of which the spermatid matures into a normal morphological sperm cell. So as you can see, this spermatid cell here is round in shape with all these organelles in there. But then it needs to attain a functionality structure, which is this kind. Okay, so there are major events that occur in spermiogenesis okay, for this spermatid to mature into a sperm cell. So as you can see, the first thing is simply nuclear morphogenesis. So nuclear morphogenesis or end condensation involves the nucleus condensing and becoming thick. Okay, that is the first, um, you know, property that occurs in spermogenesis. Then the next thing is simply formation of the tail. So how does the formation of the tail occur? So this occurs when the centrioles, there are two centrioles which are, which are located close to each other, then these two centrioles, they actually rearrange themselves into a proximal and distal centrio. Okay, so when they are rearrange themselves, the, the proximal centrio proliferates and forms the axial filament. So as you can see here, this, this small uh, proliferation of the centrio, this is known as the axial filament, of which this axial filament with further proliferation, it will form the what? It will form the principal piece. So the principal piece is just simply the um, the entire tail. Okay. Then this um, then there there is the distal the distal what the distal um centrio the distal centrio will form part of the mid piece and the distal part of the tail. Okay. So that is simply the formation of the tail. Then we have formation of the acrosome. So formation of the acrosome, as you can see, we have this red structure here known as the Golgi body or the Golgi apparatus. What will happen is that this Golgi apparatus will move towards the head side, okay? Then it will form an acrosomal cap. So this Golgi body is the one that will form an acrosomal cap. As you can see here, it is um, 
reshaping itself towards the end pole of the entire cell so it is moving towards the end pole of the entire cell like that and forming a cap so this cap here this acrosomal cap is the one that will be responsible for acrosomal reaction when in contact with the ovat with the ovat during what during fertilization then we have the next thing which is rearrangement of organelles i've already talked about the centrioles then let me talk about the mitochondria so the mitochondria will rearrange itself as you can see here it's all scattered in the cell but then it will rearrange itself around the axial filament so why is it rearranging itself around the axial filament as you can see here what it has done so it is the one that will migrate from this entire cell then to come on the meat piece when the meat piece has been formed around the axial filament so this mitochondria will rearrange itself to the meat piece okay like that since remember that we need the mitochondria for energy production as this cell is moving then the next thing is simply shedding of excess cytoplasm so the rest of the cytoplasmic contents will actually be shedded out of the cell okay so because we only need these main things the acrosomal cap the nucleus the proximal centriole, the mid piece here and the tail for movement so with this morphological structure that this um, sperm cell has attained it is actually mature now and spermogenesis ends there right so what are some of the defects that occur in sp spermatogenesis so the defects you can have a um, you know this is a normal sperm count of which you have enough sperm production but then in other instances you can have a condition known as oligosuspermia which is simply a low sperm count in which the testes are not producing enough amount of sperms then another one is simply um, a condensed acrosome right so you can have a condensed acrosome you can have a small head and a, a sperm with a small head you can have a sperm with a, with a large head which is known as macroencephaly or this one which is known as microencephaly then you can have a head double headed sperm or you can have a double head a double tailed sperm or you can have an abnormal piece of the sperm there then the last defect that I wanted to talk about is simply known as global zoospermia. So um, it is a condition in which the head, the head of the sperm is actually round in shape because initially the, the normal shape of the sperm is simply piriform. Okay, but then in global zoospermia, the shape of the head of the sperm is actually round. Okay. So that marks the end of our video i hope you liked it and um, please watch our next video on all genesis and please don't forget to like share and subscribe right so this is where we end our video shalom shalom